936, let's bring in Summer Barrett via telephone from the Capitol. Good morning, Summer. Good morning. At least you didn't come, well, at least you didn't try to come eight weeks early and then actually come six weeks early. <laughs> That's right. I, I, you know, I tend to forget that, that uh, young Berkeley was way early because I, I remember yeah. texting with you while you were uh, bedridden for what, two months? Two weeks. Two yes. weeks. I could not have done it for two months. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you don't sit still, period, anyway. So two weeks in, in bed rest must have been yikes. It was bad. It was bad. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all worth it, right? <laughs> oh, yes. All worth definitely. it in the end. So now, much- you say fun. Uh, rewarding? Would that be a better word than fun? It's a good word. Uh, rewarding for sitting, yeah. sitting you, in the hospital bed. Well, no, you said you said for the two months there it was fun. I cannot imagine that being fun. I can oh, think. No, 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 no. I said I could not have done bed rest for two months. I would have lost my mind. Yeah, oh, yeah. Two weeks. Two weeks was bad enough. <laughs> and how? Uh, so, uh, in regards to your employment status, that has changed over the last year or so, and I know many people in the county have uh, interest in what you do, as you were formerly employed as the, basically the, I, I know it was called like a public affairs officer for the county, uh, we, we always said lobbyist or whatever, government affairs, I think. Uh, could you tell us what has changed over the last year? Um, n- nothing, our, our status with... Um Berkeley County has not changed, mm-hmm. but um, Daniel Hall and I, um, we started our own firm, a government affairs firm, and um, we're still contracted with Berkeley County to lobby on their behalf and do government affairs and public relations for them. Um, but it's just with uh, a firm called Access Strategies instead of under Omega. Gotcha. So that's really the only change as far as Berkeley County is concerned. How much time is left on that contract, Summer? Uh, Just through this year. I think it's November 30th would be up for for, uh, renewal. And have you gotten any indication one way or the other from the newly sat commissioners or council members, I guess, as they're called until your husband and the others change the laws down there so we can call the commission again? (laughs) Uh, Have you got any indication? Yes, hopefully. Yes. Hopefully we will we will get that bill across the finish line Please. to allow them to be a commission again. <laughs> Please do. Uh, have you gotten any indication as to whether they're interested in renewing the contract? Um, I mean, not. I I know that most of them are very. I mean, I think all of them are happy with the work that we do. Um, I am almost solely devoted to working on their behalf, um, and so I hope. I certainly hope that we can continue that work because. I think a consistent voice and a consistent face um, at the Capitol and with our legislators is really important. They know that Daniel and I represent Berkeley County, um, and so it kind of, over time, really helps the relationship that the county has with with the legislators. What is what is your focus this legislative session as it benefits Berkeley County specifically? Well, Berkeley County always has a very long list of priorities. Um, but we are working really hard on a lot of them and having some good progress. Um, I know we've talked for what seems like three years now. I think it really has been three years about the regional jail per diem that the counties pay. Um, so we, this year's kind of make or break, do or die situation. Um, the Senate leadership has said, they are not interested in running a, another freeze bill. So that would, over the last couple of years, they've run a bill to just freeze the per diem rate. Um, Senate leadership, and in fact, probably House leadership, no one's really interested in continuing to just kick the can down the road. Um, and we we really would like to see a actual fix also, um, a long-term solution to that problem. Um, so in, with House leadership, or I'm sorry, with Senate leadership, we've been working with them um, they are working on a formula that would incentivize counties to re- use resources like the Day Report Center, Drug Court, and other rehabilitation services um, to, to see their portion of the bill lowered. Um, and Berkeley County does a very good job at using those resources. Um, so the, there would be a formula that if you, based on you know how much your population is and how many jail nights you have, um, it would determine the incentive 
de-incentivization. Is that even a word? I think I might have just made that up. but I think it is a word, actually. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, the level of um, incentive that you that the counties receive. So um, we're hopeful that that will be in actual bill format this week so we can get to work um, advocating for it. Uh, the formula as it stands currently based on our last conversations would save Berkeley County um, close to 200,000 a year um, in opposed to what they have been paying. Um, and the alternative is that every county's bill would go up because they're currently paying a reduced per diem rate. So if they do if we do if the legislature does nothing, every county is going to see a very big increase and we obviously don't want that. Uh, especially for Berkeley County. So Billy. Uh, my hope is that we will get that across the finish line. Uh, good morning, Summer. Uh, good morning. Uh, what are the number of counties? We have 55 counties. How many have individual representatives such as yourself? Oh, gosh. I don't know now. Um, I, I, every year I hear of more and more that have have um, hired representation. Um, I would say it's probably five to eight um but i'm i've been literally just guessing i don't know yeah uh and how much uh, how much is your contract worth how much does the county pay access strategy um i should know off the top of my head but i don't uh i think it's 190 a year One hundred ninety thousand a year yes Okay, actually, it's that's more than I thought it would be. Uh, you mentioned the uh, the regional jail cost, and that's uh, mm -hmm. uh, that has been a thorn in the side for many years. Uh, the day reporting center for day one was designed to reduce those regional jail costs. In fact, mm -hmm. in the early days of uh, of uh, Berkeley County uh, day reporting center, we did that with great encouragement from the uh from the uh the legislators and the supreme court so it's uh, uh so the formula may be new but the concept has been around for quite a while uh the uh, uh I, I in my own mind again i'm from a a prior to uh having an a local representative uh and we utilize the county commission association which that was their job uh with the county commission association and the association of counties plus our one-to-one -one relationship with our individual legislators because every one of our legislators are well known uh within the county what is the need of having a local representative well, I'll speak to the County Commission Association and the Association of Counties first. Um, I think we saw um, during Amendment 2, for instance, that those organizations represent many different counties with, new, with varying needs. Um, you know, I mean, the regional jail per diem is actually a very good example. There are going to be some counties that do not like this bill. Um, because some counties are going to face penalties. Some counties currently do not pay their jail bill and haven't paid their jail bill for a long time. Some counties are going to face penalties with this formula that could see them owing greater amounts of money rather than saving because they don't use the resources that Berkeley County uses. Um, and so because there are going to be some counties that don't like this bill, the Association of Counties and the County Commission Association very well may oppose this bill. Um, but when a bill like this saves Berkeley County oh, close to $200,000 a year, they need someone to work on their behalf. Um, they have very different issues than most counties in the state. So there are often times that we are kind of on an island when it comes to us compared to other counties of the state. And, and I will also say, I think that's also a reason why it's very important to have someone from Berkeley County representing Berkeley County, because when you talk to other people from the other, other parts of the state, they do not understand what Berkeley County is going through and experiencing right now. Um, but I do. Um, I was born and raised in Berkeley County. I live in Berkeley County still. Um, so as far as those, those associations are concerned, they certainly serve a purpose, and it's great 
that the county is a part of those associations, but there are many times where they do not represent the interests of Berkeley County. Um, Amendment 2 is another example. Those associations were opposed to Amendment 2. The Berkeley County Council supported Amendment 2, and our voters all supported am- passed Amendment 2. We were the only county in the state that did that. So I think it's just a very different situation in Berkeley County than the rest of the state. Um, and as far as our our elected leaders, um, they do a very good job. But as John, uh, Delegate Hardy has said on this show many times, and, and I think really most of the uh, representatives from our area have said on this show many times, they they are not elected to to implement uh, the county's priority list. They all go down there with a couple bills that they're passionate about and they work on, and they work hard to get it through their chamber. Um, but even the county priority bills, um, you know, I've worked with Delegate Hardy year after year on certain bills, and he works really hard in the House. And then once it goes to the Senate, it's kind of like, well, his job in the House keeps going. And I ha- I then work really hard to get that bill across the finish line in the Senate. So it's certainly not any indication that our elected representatives aren't doing a good job um, from Berkeley County, but we kind of become a team and we work hard together to ensure that bills make it all the way across the finish line um, to help the people of Berkeley County. Good morning, Summer. This is John Gilstrap. Um, I want to pursue this a little farther. Put some meat on those bones, if you would. When you work on our behalf and you work really hard to push things across, what does that actually mean? What What are the What are the tactics or the you know how do you, how do you do that? I mean, building relationships. Number one, um, establishing and building relationships with the members of the House and the Senate, with the members of the governor's staff. Um, talking to them on a regular basis. We have uh, receptions at our um, Access Strategies office every Wednesday night where legislators come and we talk with them about important issues. Um, Daniel and I both have a great level of of established relationships, and then new people come in and we continue to work on those. And then it's, it's literally advocating, going to them and advocating for whatever the legislation is. So um, you know, like I'm going to continue to use Delegate Hardy as an example because he's a good <laughs> he's a good example and he's a good sport. Um, you know, we've we've worked on this acceleration of the conversion of the excess tax uh, for years and years, um, and he's very passionate about it in the House, and he's going to get it across the finish line again in the House, and then I'll get to go to the Senate and advocate for that bill. Um, and explain why it's good for Berkeley County. And really, that one would be good for for most counties. Um, So you're in a position of convincing the folks from from Greenbrier County and Mon County and and the rest of the state that what's what's best for uh, Berkeley County is somehow best for them as well? Yeah, yeah. I mean, a a good example of working with some folks from other areas of the state, um, there is a bill that we are working on um, that would instruct the commissioner of um, DOH to develop a formula for um, allocating road funding. So um, it would be based on population, population growth rates, total lane miles, heavy truck miles, number of bridges. Um, And this is obviously, we all know, it's an extremely important issue to Berkeley County. Um, But you can't just approach this and say, hey, this is really good for Berkeley County. Now everyone else needs to vote for it. And um, so we have, I've been working with some folks from Montegalia County um, because they desperately need highway dollars also. And uh, in a formula like this would benefit them. Um, So I work, I'm working with Senator Oliverio from that area and he's sponsoring the legislation in the Senate. And then that, that way it, you know, it benefits more than just Berkeley County and more people get on board and they realize it could benefit their area. So that's kind of how I go about it. As a, uh, a very quick clarification, a while ago you used the term excess tax in conjunction with John Hardy. I think you actually meant transfer tax, do you not? Um, it's an excise tax on property transfers. Well, that okay. That's all. I've always heard it called transfer tax. Oh, you may well be right. What about home rule? Has home rule been discussed at all? Uh, for counties? Yes, yes. 
Um, I mean, it's it's always a discussion. I, I'm going to be very, very blunt and honest. There's really no appetite for it in the legislature right now, um, especially after what happened with Amendment 2. Um, again, you know, we had the County Commission Association and the Association of Counties come out very loud and vocal against that amendment. Um, and, and so that's obviously rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. Um, and there's just really no appetite for giving the counties home rule in this legislature. Okay, I was going to say, and Rob correctly cut me off because I, I interrupted. I did not mean to. Uh, I have a hard time associating home rule with uh, uh, with uh, uh, Amendment 2, uh, but you're saying that's because folks are still smarting from Amendment 2. They're not about to give any more control to the counties via home rule. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, that's, that's yes. Yes, you're correct. That's, that's what I mean. And I mean, but it's it didn't just start now. They they do not like what the municipalities did with when, when they gave them the ability to have home rule and impose a, a one cent sales tax. And, and the agreement was that they would lower or remove their um, B and B and O tax. Um, right, B and O tax or no? Regardless, B and O tax. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, sorry, there's so many words flying around. <laughs> um, and then they and they haven't. So um, there was already a bad taste in their mouth, and and Republicans and conservatives obviously don't want to support any tax increase. So the exchange of reducing or removing one tax for another was kind of the deal, and then that hasn't that hasn't been followed through. So they already were not really interested in doing it, and now following Amendment Two, they're really not interested in doing it. Yeah, I, I, I don't really want to get point-counterpoint, but I, I found that argument to be a little uh, uh, circular. Uh, home rule is not just uh, imposing income tax or sales tax. It has a lot of fa- factors. Uh, I, oh, hear, yes. I hear the I, I, Republicans continually argue, let's give the government as close to the voters we possibly can. We make, They make that argument uh, when it comes to the federal government. Let's give it to the give it closer to the voters. But the one opportunity to make it even closer to the voters is the home rule. And it's not just this, uh, this group of legislators. It's been the same thing for several years the argument is yeah we want to get it closer to the voters uh but there are exceptions so oh you're you're preaching to the choir that's the same yeah. exact okay. arguments yeah. that i use when i advocate for it <laughs> summer barrett is our guest here on the program just a couple of minutes left uh summer uh, how does the county gauge its success with the contract they've issued uh on behalf of your firm to lobby on behalf of berkeley county are there are there um, card I- criteria measurables I I don't know how they personally measure it. I measure it by how much money I bring back to the county. And um, year over year, the bills that we get across the finish line for Berkeley County more than uh, probably triple the amount that they're spending on a con on our contract. Um, and that's how I my goal every single year is to ensure that I'm returning at least that amount every single year and we have more than done that um for the last three years that i've been working with berkeley county and i have posted those figures on the feed numerous times so for folks saying that they've never seen (laughs) that because there are none um i've given it many times i can do that again um for the folks asking but that's how I judge it. I, I am assuming that the, the folks on the council would agree that success would be determined as to how much money we return to the county. About a minute left. I'm going to put you in a pickle here, right? So you, you've worked for the governor. You worked on behalf of the legislature. Can you tell me, is, is this divide between the governor's office and the Senate fixable? Oh, yeah. I mean... <laughs> I have have heard that the governor and and Senate President Blair and the House and the Senate, they have all had meetings and they've all, um, you know, they've they've been in the same room. And and I don't I don't think that I mean, you're always going to have disagreements and um, 
I, I don't think that's going to prevent them from doing meaningful tax reform. Do you believe we'll have tax reform by the end of this legislative session or will it take another special session to finish it? That's a great question. <laughs> if I ask enough, um, one of them is going to be good. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I, I mean, I obviously don't know the answer. Mir- miracles do still happen. Uh, so who knows? Maybe they will get it done during a regular session. Um, but I do know that I have been told by by those the powers that be that if they don't get it across the finish line, they will get it across the finish line in a special session. It's it's very difficult to have a hot button issue during the regular session because there are so many things moving. Um, so who knows? But Summer, thank you very I've much. Told they're gonna okay. Thank you. I appreciate Thanks, your time. All right, thank you guys. Bye.